let's discuss question number four part a table 4.1 shows a sequence of 12 nucleotides in the template strand of a short length of a dna molecule the corresponding primary transcript and the four amino acids coded for by the sequence the table is incomplete part one complete table 4.1 to show the sequence of nucleotides in the primary transcript that would result from the transcription of this short length of dna so guys over here a short part of the DNA template strand is given and over here they have shown the primary transcript you all know that the DNA template strand is transcribed to produce primary transcript the process is transcription so we have to complete the table by putting in the correct sequence of primary transcript right so you all know that whenever transcription occurs and we go from the DNA template strand to the primary transcript, what happens is that there is complementary base pairing. So C pairs with G, C on DNA, C on DNA uh, pairs with G on primary transcript. A will pair with U on the primary transcript because primary transcript is RNA and RNA does not contain thymine or T, right? So A will pair with U, C will pair with G. T on the DNA will pair with A on the RNA, A will pair with U, C will pair with G. T will pair with A, C will pair with G and C will pair with G. Then A will pair with U, A will pair with U and C will pair with G. So this is the sequence of nucleotide bases in the primary transcript. All right, let's move on to the part two. Table 4.2 shows all the possible template strand DNA triplets that code for the amino acids labeled AA1, AA2, AA3, and AA4 in the table 4.1. So guys, they have given us the amino acids corresponding to the DNA triplets, right? Complete table 4.3 to identify the four amino acids labeled AA1, AA2, AA3, AA4 in the table 4.1. All right. So what is AA1? AA1 is being coded by the DNA triplet that is CAC. So if we look at in the table, CAC is coding for valine, right? So over here, we will write well. If we look at AA2, AA2 is coded by TAC. This is the DNA triplet. And TAC is coding for met or methionine. All right, AA3 is being coded by TCC. So TCC is coding arginine or ARG. And AA4 is coded by AAC. So AAC is coding for leucine or LEU, right? So these are the amino acids AA1, AA2, AA3 and AA4. Let's move on to the next part. Part two, what, uh, part three, sorry. One type of gene mutation is caused by the substitution of a DNA nucleotide. Using the information in table 4.2, state and explain the effect on the final protein structure of a substitution of the nucleotide at position three. So guys, they're saying that if there's a base substitution, or the substitution of a nucleotide at position 3, what will happen to the structure of the final protein? If we look at position 3, so this is what they are talking about. So what is base substitution? Base substitution is when one base is replaced by another base. So C can be replaced by A or it can be replaced by T or it can be replaced by G, right? So the possible triplets will be CAA or CAT or CAG. Let's have a look if the substitution can cause any amino acid change. We can see over here that CAC is coding for valine and valine is also coded by CAT, CAG and CAA. So you can see that if even if there is a base substitution, there will be no change in the amino acid. 
right the mutation will be silent because all the triplets starting with ca all the triplets starting with ca code for valine right so there will be no change in the amino acid and the amino acid sequence there will be no change in the primary structure and tertiary structure this will be a silent mutation so over here we will write that substitution of a nucleotide substitution of a dna nucleotide at position 3 can produce either can, can produce caa or cat or cag and all these triplets all these triplet codes all these triplet codes code for valine so there will be no change so there will be no change will be no change in the sequence of amino acids or protein structure or protein structure substitution mutation will be silent or we can simply write silent mutation silent mutation we can also mention the word degenerate in the first point that the triplet codes are degenerate the triplet codes the triplet codes are degenerate degenerate code means degenerates uh, sorry degenerate codes mean that these are the codes which are different but they have the same meaning these are the different codes but they code for the same amino acid all right let's move on to part four a second type of gene mutation is caused by the deletion of a dna nucleotide so they are talking about deletion mutation now using the information in table 4.2 state and explain the effect on the final protein structure of a deletion of the nucleotide at position 3 so right now now they have changed the situation and what is the situation now let's have a look they are asking us to delete the nucleotide at position 3 so for example if this nucleotide is deleted what will be the new sequence c a t right what would be the new sequence of dna c a t then a c t right and then c c a and then a c so what would happen to the first amino acid c a c is now changed to the triplet CAC is now changed to CAT and CAC was coding for valine so does the CAT so there will be no change in the first amino acid first amino acid will remain valine because CAT codes for valine however if we look at the next um, code this is ACT right and ACT is basically a stop code how do I know that because if what is the what is complementary to ACT u g a you should remember that u a a that is you are away or u g a that is you go away or u a g you are gone these are stop codons right these are stop codons so basically the code that is formed over here the triplet code that is formed over here is a c t which is complementary to the codon that is u g a so basically a stop codon or stop code a stop code has arised or we can say that the stop code has arisen like right so because of this what will happen there will be 
there will be production of incomplete polypeptide right there will be immature termination of the translation right so incomplete polypeptide will be made so what should we write over here we can write that the first amino acid the first amino acid stays the same cat still codes for cat still codes for valine then we can talk about frame shift there is frame shift which means that all which means that all the uh, triplet codes or all the triplet codes have changed beyond the point of mutation right there is frame shift all the triplet codes have changed beyond the point of mutation you can also say that the sequence of nucleotide bases has changed beyond the point of mutation then we can uh, write over here that stop code arises in between resulting in premature termination of the translation process resulting in premature termination of translation process resulting in incomplete polypeptide chain formation or we can say resulting in formation of a yeah, synthesis of resulting in the synthesis of incomplete polypeptide so primary structure changes and tertiary structure changes so primary structure changes and tertiary structure changes so these are the changes in the protein structure let's move on to part b replication of nuclear dna occurs just once in every mitotic cell cycle so they are, so they are saying that uh, dna replication occurs only once every mitotic cell cycle six named events associated with the mitotic cell cycle are listed the events are not listed in any particular order draw a circle around each event where replication of nuclear dna occurs so guys you should remember that dna replication occurs during s phase and you should know that s phase basically is a part of interphase so technically we have to circle each event where replication of dna occurs so that is the s phase and the interphase basically interphase includes s phase right all right let's move on to part c outline how dna is replicated inside the nucleus over here we simply have to write the process of dna replication the question is of four marks so you just have to write four points it's not necessary that you write the entire process because uh, there are a lot of points if we talk about the entire process so you can just write four points if you want and it's better however it's better to write the entire process because you don't know that what points might be included in the marking scheme and what points are not included so we will start from the first step that is dna unzips or unwinds due to breakdown of hydrogen bonds dna unzips or unwinds the unzipping of dna means that the two dna strands separate dna unzips or unwinds due to due to the breakdown of due to breakdown of hydrogen bonds between complementary bases complementary bases by 
DNA helicase. So you all know that unzipping of DNA is catalyzed by DNA helicase. What is the next step? Next step is that the basis of oh uh, we 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 will first write that each separate strand of DNA each separate strand of DNA acts as a template acts as a template for the formation of the new strand for the formation of new strand right then we will say that basis of free activated DNA nucleotides basis of free activated DNA nucleotides pair with complementary bases pair with exposed pair with exposed complementary bases on the template strand right what's next the dna polymerase joins the nucleotides by the formation of phosphodiester bonds phosphodiester bonds we have missed one thing in point 3 is that the basis of the free activated DNA nucleotides pair with the exposed complementary bases on the template strand by which type of bonding? The base pairing occurs by hydrogen bonding. You can also mention that A pairs with T and C pairs with G. Then what's the next point? Leading strand is formed continuously whereas the lagging strand lagging strand is formed in fragments is formed in Okazaki fragments and these fragments are sealed or joined by DNA ligase DNA ligase joins Okazaki fragments Okazaki fragments by the formation of hydrogen by the formation of phosphodiester bonds sorry not hydrogen bonds DNA ligase joins Okazaki fragments by the formation of phosphodiester bonds all right let's move on to part D Figure 4.1 shows the structure of an ATP molecule. State the name of the part of ATP molecule labeled A in figure 4.1. So guys, this is the molecule of ATP. This is adenine. This is adenine base. This one is the um, ribose sugar. This is ribose, right? And these three are phosphate groups, three phosphate groups. So the molecule, uh, so the part of the ATP molecule labeled A is ribose. Please remember that you cannot write pentose. You have to write ribose because they are, they are asking the name. They are not asking the type of the sugar that is present. So you will write ribose. A ATP contains ribose. So guys, we are done with question number four. Let's move on to question number five. The pathogen that causes cholera is a prokaryot. Part A. Figure 5.1 shows an electron micrograph of the pathogen that causes cholera. Name the type of electron microscope used to produce the image shown in figure 5.1. So guys, if you look at the image, the image is 3D and the type of electron microscope that produces 3D images is the scanning electron microscope. So this is scanning electron microscope or we can say S E M scanning electron microscope 
All right. Name the species of prokaryote that causes cholera. So the species of prokaryote that causes cholera is Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio cholerae. And you can also pronounce it like Vibrio cholerae. All right, part B. The passage contains a description of the main features of prokaryotic cells. There is one factual error in the passage. Identify and correct the factual error in the passage. So let's have a look. Let's read the passage and let's pick out this factual error and then we will correct it. Prokaryotic cells are unicellular and generally between one to five micrometers in diameter. So guys, this is true. Prokaryotes do not have organelles surrounded by a double membrane. This is true as well. They do have cell surface membranes, 70s ribosomes and a cellulose cell wall. This is wrong. They do have cell surface membrane. They do have 70s ribosomes, but they do not have a cellulose cell wall. So we have to identify and correct the factual error in the passage. So what is the error? What is the error? Presence of cellulose cell wall. This is the error. What is correction? Prokaryotes have peptidoglycan cell wall, not cellulose cell wall. Uh, prokaryotes have tido glycan cell wall. They don't have cellulose cell wall, right? So guys, we're done with question number five. Now we will move on to question number six.